Our topic today is eye care, and my guest is uh, Dr. Darcy Duzan from Lifetime Eye Care here in Charleston. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Well, let's, let's hit a question that you probably get a lot. What's the difference between an optician, an optometrist, and an ophthalmologist? <laughs> right. First of all, which one are you? I am an optometrist. Okay. And so they are all very similar words, so it's easy to get them confused. Uh -huh. um, probably the easiest one in optometrist is somebody who would help you choose glasses, um, they help you find out what lens is best for you. Um, an optometrist is actually a primary eye care physician. Mm -hmm. um, we do glasses prescriptions, but we also treat eye diseases, um, eye infections, we treat things like glaucoma. And then an ophthalmologist is an MD, or sometimes a DO, mm -hmm. <laughs> a medical doctor who's then done a residency in some field related to the eye. Okay. So they can be cataract surgeons or retina specialists or corneal specialists. Um, and a lot of times all three professions <laughs> work together, of course, too. Okay. Well, what causes our eyes to get bad in the first place that we need to get glasses or contacts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anytime you're not seeing the things that you want or need to see um, there's a possibility that you need glasses or contacts and it's all based on light entering the eye mm -hmm. through our cornea that's the front clear part but then right beside or behind our pupil is something called the lens mm -hmm. and so just like your camera has a lens that focuses your picture the lens for our eye focuses the things that we see and sometimes our lens doesn't focus it perfectly <laughs> in the right spot. So um, in general, your lens not focusing to the right spot would be what would cause someone to need glasses or contacts. Mm -hmm. Are, is bad eyesight uh, hereditary? I think so, obviously sometimes it can mm -hmm. be and sometimes it's not. <laughs> I'm very nearsighted. Mm -hmm. um, my parents aren't. Right. <laughs> so in that case, I don't think that it was. Um, there's a, probably if I knew the answer to that question, <laughs> it would be a, a very worthwhile. But there's a lot of studies looking at why some, our eyes develop the way that they do. Mm -hmm. And especially in kids who are nearsighted, if we knew what made them nearsighted, then maybe we could even prevent it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the kind of interesting studies in the last year or so was that you think maybe that if you read a lot or if, like playing video games right. up close all the time might make us nearsighted. Mm -hmm. um, and this, the studies don't really support that even though it seems like it makes sense. And this new study was showing that being outdoors, and it was actually not even related to seeing, like looking at things farther away or not doing close work, but actually outdoor light maybe has a, a positive effect on how our eyes mm -hmm. form and could potentially make it where we're less nearsighted. So then all those years your mother said, don't sit too close to the TV, you'll go blind, or yeah. it's bad for your eyes. <laughs> My grandmother actually <laughs> said that a lot. Um, but no, it, we don't think that has much of an effect on how our, our eyes actually form or mm -hmm. whether or not we become nearsighted or farsighted. But does, does all the work that we do at computers, does that create some level of eye strain for us? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. There's something called even computer vision syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of things. Uh, a lot of us are pretty intent looking at whatever right. we're doing on the computer. So one issue is that we don't blink as much as we should, uh -huh. and that causes dry eyes. Mm -hmm. um, there's also glare that comes off of some computer screens. They're kind of getting better these days. And so that can cause us to squint and cause eye strain too. Um, when you're on the computer, it's really good to try to take breaks <laughs> about mm -hmm. every 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you're blinking your eyes. <laughs> a lot of times I'll recommend artificial tears mm -hmm. and re-wetting drops to my patients that are on the computer a lot. Um, and they even make a coating on glasses that cuts, mm -hmm. down, on cuts glare. down on glare. Well, let's uh, start with young children when it comes to eye care. There, there's an Illinois law, correct, mm -hmm. that well, I'll have you explain. <laughs> sure. Um, any child entering an Illinois school for the first time, so if it's kindergarten or if they've moved from another state, mm -hmm. is actually required not only to have a vision screening, which mm -hmm. is what they used to do at schools, but to have an eye exam by 
an eye doctor. Okay. And um, one of the things that kind of brought that about was actually teachers came to the Illinois Optometric Association and the Ophthalmology Association about this legislation. Um, it wasn't started by eye doctors. So <laughs> I think the teachers see the importance of vision to their students. So when those children are getting those screening tests, what are the eye doctors looking for and what should parents be aware of? Sure. Um, and we try to educate all the parents while they're there so that they know what we're doing and they can kind of watch their kids down the road mm -hmm. and continue to bring them in for eye exams. But we first check their vision, mm -hmm. um, especially in younger kids. You want to make sure that their vision's about the same in each eye. Right. There's a type of lazy eye mm -hmm. <laughs> that is actually where one eye just has a lot higher prescription than the other. And if you had a child like that, and they see fine, but they're only using one eye. And mm -hmm. unless you cover that eye, even they sometimes don't know, or sometimes they're aware of it, but they just think it's normal mm -hmm. since they don't know any mm -hmm. different. Um, so we're looking for that because that's something that has to be caught and actually treated at a young age. Okay. Um, we also want to make sure that their eyes work together as a team as far as the muscles go. So making sure that they um, can track words properly on a page. Mm -hmm. We check their color vision and their depth perception and then also the health of their eyes too. Okay, because I, I think about it, it usually is the teachers that notice that, you know, the right. child is squinting and reports that home to parents. Yeah. What are some things though that parents can be looking for in their children while they're at home to sort of take note of if they think right. their child may have vision problems? Um, I, I think squinting, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. <laughs> I get a lot of parents that bring their kids in for sitting too close to the TV. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell them, I, sometimes maybe they can't see it, but also I think there's an attention issue. Like the mm -hmm. closer you get to it, the less you have to worry about right. things around you. Right, it can be right all you. in your face. <laughs> um, but even sometimes if they just avoid reading or doing any near work, because they might not know to tell you that you know, it hurts their eyes or it hurts their head or it's not clear, they just don't do it because it's not comfortable mm -hmm. for them. So I think of avoiding things up close or um, <laughs> watching them for squinting or sitting close, too close okay. to the TV. So if you have eye problems, you either have far, you're either farsighted or nearsighted and then you can have an astigmatism. I'm going to have you explain those three for us. Sure. Um, when we were talking about the light coming into the eye earlier, mm -hmm. When the lens focuses it too um, close or like too strongly, it focuses in front of the retina. The mm -hmm. retina is the inside surface of the eye. And those are people who are nearsighted. Okay. Or we also call it myopia. Mm -hmm. So either their eye is too long or their lens is too strong. Either way, it's not in the right spot. Mm -hmm. And they usually can actually see things up close, but it's really hard to see things far away right. because of that. The other type, farsightedness, or we call it hyperopia, um, when the lens or the eye is too short or the lens isn't strong enough, it focuses behind mm -hmm. the retina. So okay. um, people that are farsighted can sometimes actually their eye just kind of focuses in for them and can bring that into focus on the retina. Mm -hmm. um, and then astigmatism is always the <laughs> one that confuses most people. Uh -huh. And it's actually usually more related to the cornea or the front surface of the eye. Mm -hmm. And if our cornea was perfectly round like the side of a basketball, then light would all be focusing the same way. But a lot of our corneas aren't perfectly round. They're more like the, a football is commonly used. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, not the pointed end of the football, <laughs> just the, the side. Uh -huh. um, so there's more of a curve one way than the other. Mm -hmm. And that causes light to actually focus in two different spots instead of together. Mm -hmm. So we make glasses that have those two, or contacts, that have those two different powers built into it so that it brings everything into focus at okay. one place. So do you kind of have sort of like double vision or? Um, it, not in really. most cases, if it were severe, you mm -hmm. would have kind of a double vision, mm -hmm. but most of the time it ends up being just kind of like a shadow okay. or a fuzziness. So if someone had only astigmatism, usually they see okay, but it's just not sharp. Okay. Um, let's talk about as, as kids get older, they may say, hey, mom, I want contacts. I don't want to wear glasses anymore. What age do you recommend 
is a good age for, for teenagers or kids to get contacts? I usually don't have a specific age that I recommend, okay. but it's more related to a conversation with the parent mm -hmm. and the child and discussing what would be expected of them as far as what they have to do to take care of the lenses, mm -hmm. putting them in their eyes, taking them out, and getting a feeling for whether they both feel like the child is mature enough mm -hmm. to handle that. So okay. I've had seven-year-olds with contacts who did great, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then sometimes you have adults that aren't so good at taking care of them. Well, let's move on to some of the eye problems that we have as we get older, and I'm thinking of glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration. Talk to us a little bit about, let's start with cataracts. What, mm -hmm. what is that and what causes it? Um, cataracts is where the lens inside of the eye that we've been talking about, um, it actually gets a little bit cloudy mm -hmm. over time. And I, I used to work with a doctor who would tell his patients, even little babies have cataracts because it's something that just starts really slowly over our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And eventually it gets to the point where we're looking through this cloudy lens and we're not seeing things the way that we need to or want to. Mm -hmm. um, the treatment for that, of course, is typically cataract surgery. So they can actually, a cataract surgeon, um, so an ophthalmologist mm -hmm. who specializes in that, will uh, be able to take that lens out and replace it with a clear new one that's um, actually made out of a plastic type material and never gets cloudy mm -hmm. again throughout the lifetime. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yes. And glaucoma, that's that test that everybody hates <laughs> when we go to the eye doctor, that puff okay. of air in the eye. What, what is that telling you as a doctor? Right. And we actually don't even have a puff of air in my office. <laughs> There's other ways of checking pressure. Okay. And uh, I think that people are pretty glad when you tell them you're yes. not going to do the puff of air. Um, but so glaucoma is an eye disease where the pressure inside of the eye is too high. Um, it doesn't have to be a specific number. It's mm -hmm. very individual. But that pressure then causes damage um, to it a part of the eye called the optic nerve, and that's mm -hmm. really the cord between our eye and our brain. Okay. So we check pressure because it's easy to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though some people don't like the way that it's done all the time. <laughs> um, but we're just making sure that it's a, within a normal range, kind of like when you go to the doctor and have your blood pressure mm -hmm. checked every time. Um, but we're also then looking at the nerve and making sure that it looks healthy too. Okay. Um, the two go hand in hand. Glaucoma is something where um, you wouldn't notice it on your own until it had gotten got pretty severe. Okay. So it's good to have eye exams to check for it. What would be some of the symptoms if it is something really severe? Is it pain? Uh, in some cases, there are different types of glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So there are some that cause really high pressure all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And that can be painful, even like a headache or nausea. Mm -hmm. um, the normal type of glaucoma that doesn't have that high of pressure, actually the way that it affects our vision is first with our peripheral vision mm -hmm. and then kind of coming in toward the middle. Okay. So if it were allowed to go on without treatment, it could end up with even tunnel vision or mm -hmm. in very severe cases, blindness. Okay, that brings me to another uh, issue and that's macular degeneration. You hear a little more about this all the time. What is it? And there, I understand that there's some new treatments available yeah. for that. Um, macular degeneration is actually the leading cause or the leading eye disease over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. And the macula is a part of our retina, so it's inside of the eye where all of our very central vision is. So everything that you look straight ahead at, so you use it for reading or seeing someone's face. And in some people, actually, if we all live long enough, it starts to wear out. Mm -hmm. um, some people it happens faster than others. So there are two different types of macular degeneration. I've heard of that before, but one of them is called wet and the mm -hmm. other one's dry. Okay. Dry is more common and it usually has less effect on vision, mm -hmm. um, but we've found that certain vitamins and nutrients probably help to prevent it or even prevent it from getting worse. 
Um, the other type is called wet, and that's when there's actually a little bit of blood vessels leaking, some bleeding in the mm -hmm. macula. And so that can cause more severe vision loss. Um, and there's treatment for it in the past uh, six to eight years or so, where um, they use an, in a medication that's injected into the eye, and it actually s seals up, kind of dries up those blood mm -hmm. vessels. And there are people who sometimes get really good vision back, where before we had this treatment, they um, would have just lost their central vision. Mm -hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, well, there are ways to correct our vision <laughs> with laser eye uh, surgery. How do you, uh, rec or who's recommended for a surgery like that? Um, so usually it's people who are nearsighted, mm -hmm. who are good candidates. Um, they can correct astigmatism too. Mm -hmm. um, people that have healthy eyes in general, of course. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, another thing that kind of pops up later in life is this abil inability to see things up close. <laughs> it doesn't correct that. You need the cheater glasses <laughs> yeah. for that. And so you always have to make sure that people know what they can get out of it and what they might mm -hmm. not get out of it. But so once you have that, um, are your eyes corrected then for the rest of your life or will they kind of tend to get worse as you it age? Depends. Okay. Um, so most people are usually pretty well set. Uh -huh. uh, I have seen people have changes after their LASIK. Um, we all develop cataracts eventually, mm -hmm. so that is something down the road that can still affect our vision. Mm -hmm. Although after cataract surgery and they put the new lens in place, then things should be pretty clear um, after that as well. Okay. Uh, when we were just talking about cheater glasses, how do you know if you just need a pair of you know, non-prescription cheater glasses versus a prescription? Um, probably getting an eye exam is the best way <laughs> okay. to tell. <laughs> uh, so when we check, I mean, sometimes people come in, or they've been wearing reading glasses, mm -hmm. and maybe that is what they need. Uh -huh. um, but sometimes they've also become kind of a little bit farsighted over time, or they might have some astigmatism, or maybe their eyes aren't equal, mm -hmm. and they only sell those cheaters and equal Equals, powers. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not against cheaters in any way, mm -hmm. but um, I do think the only way you can tell is having an eye exam to make sure that they are okay for you. Okay. Let's talk in general about some things that we can do now to protect our eyes and to keep our eyes healthy for many, many years to come. Right. What should we be doing? Uh, if you have children, what are some things that we should be helping our children with? Yeah. I think of course, regular eye exams, mm -hmm. um, because there are a lot of eye diseases that have no um, symptoms, mm -hmm. at least at first, mm -hmm. that you might notice yourself. And then sunglasses are really good for our eyes, too. Okay. Actually, 90% of UV damage to our eyes happens before the age of 18. Really? So, good to put sunglasses on the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as we talked about, like with macular degeneration, Eating good fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. good nutrients in your diet mm -hmm. are actually um, in the long run healthy for our eyes too. Okay, when you talked about sunglasses, is it just any old pair of sunglasses that you get at a drugstore? Or are there, is there, are there certain ones that yeah. you should look for? I want to make sure that they actually block UVA and UVB okay. light 100%. Mm -hmm. Um, because otherwise you're wearing these shades that make the pupil larger and they're uh -huh. just letting more of those dangerous rays into the eyes. Um, also a, a big topic in sunglasses is whether they're polarized or not. Okay. I like polarized sunglasses and they used to just be for fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> they cut down on glare. Mm -hmm. um, so everything, the road, or car windshields, all have some glare mm -hmm. coming off of them. Um, so polarized sunglasses are a little bit more comfortable for our eyes. Because what does that UVA, UVB light doing to our eyes? Is that what's making us farsighted and nearsighted? Or? Uh, actually, it's probably what could be causing cataracts okay. and macular degeneration. Uh -huh. um, UV light, we know to our skin, causes it to age <laughs> yeah. more quickly. Mm -hmm. So in our eyes, um, it's probably true that it causes them mm -hmm. to age more quickly as well. 
You talked briefly about eating the right kind of foods. Are there certain vitamins or minerals or supplements? I mean, you see on the store shelves, you know, this one's good for eye health. Right. <laughs> what are some sort of things that, sure. that are good for eye health? We used to think it was carrots. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are no blind rabbits, right. apparently. <laughs> And well, beta carotene and carrots can help with night vision. And there are people in countries that um, don't have good nutrition, a lot of fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables available, mm -hmm. that can actually have blindness due to a lack of beta carotene. But, um, you know, not a big problem here. The nutrients that are really good for helping prevent macular degeneration are um, two things called lutein and zeaxanthin. Mm -hmm. Lutein is found in spinach, kale, um, kind of dark green leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. and zeaxanthin is in things like colorful peppers and sweet corn. Um, if you don't eat a lot of those things in your diet, then they make them in supplements mm -hmm. too. Okay. So again, as we've got just about a minute left, um, once your child gets that initial eye exam when they enter school here in Illinois, how often do you recommend an eye exam? Um, if there's something that I'm watching, so if they wear glasses mm -hmm. or I think they might need glasses down the road, we'll usually recommend once a year mm -hmm. unless they notice any problems before then. Um, if not, I would usually say about every two years okay. just for general eye health. And sometimes I was one of those kids that kind of hid <laughs> my nearsightedness. <laughs> so sometimes you don't know <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that they can't see. They have good ways of kind of working around that. Mm -hmm. So. And eye exam is good for keeping on top of that too. <laughs> and then as we get older, if you've never had glasses or contacts over the age of, you know, I don't know, 25, 30, how often should you be getting an eye exam? So still, like contact with lens wearers, especially, we year. see every year. Mm -hmm. um, but even young, healthy adults, usually about every two years. Okay. Well, Dr. Duzan, thank you for coming on our show. You have the honor of being our first eye doctor. <laughs> thank you. Hope to have you back again soon. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks.